Welcome to this new video in which I will explain how to use the all new official React Swiper plugin. To get started, run npx create react app and add the name of your application. Let it create your project folder, install all the dependencies and then open the folder in your favorite IDE. First thing we're going to do is remove all the files we don't need. We're not going to create a PWA, so let's remove the service worker as well, all test files. We also do not need logo.svg, which is just a test object from create React app. Also, we're deleting all CSS files and instead use just one CSS file and call it styles.css. Last but not least, we need to remove all the references to those files we just deleted. In order to get started with our own code, we need to remove all the demo code from Create React App. Now we are ready to try out with a hello world if our application works. To do so, make sure that all your dependencies are installed by calling yarn and then run yarn start. If you do not have yarn installed, install it by typing npm install minus g yarn. As you can see on the left side, our hello world application works. So let's see how we can install React Swiper for our application. In order to get this done, simply run yarn add swiper. As you can see, we now have the latest version of React Swiper installed, which is 6.0.2 in July 2020. Next, let's go to our app.js file and import all the dependencies we need. As you can see, we are adding Swiper, Swiper Slide, Swiper Core, as well as the style sheets for Swiper React. Next, we have to remove the Hello World markup and add our React fragment as a parent element, then add our Swiper containers into the markup. We give the container an ID and also we need to create a placeholder for the slides, which we will create with a for loop. In this example, we will create a swiper with five slides. Each slide has a key, which is required by React. Each slide also has an image. In this example, we will use a service which is called pixom.photos. It can provide random images by providing the size of the image you need. Also, we're passing over an ID to identify each image. Let's see if this works by hitting the yarn start script. Unfortunately, we have a small typing error here. The path to the CSS file is not absolute. Instead, we just need to reference the library. And there you go. We have a small carousel which provides a couple of random images which we can swipe from left to right and back. Let's bring up DevTools here because I would like to show you something. As you can see, the container for the swipe as well as each slide is a div element. Now in most cases this is okay, but there are cases in which you want to change this. Now in our example, you want to change this to an unordered list or UL, which consists of multiple LI elements. To change this, just give the swiper a new tag and do the same thing for the swiper slide.
As you can see, the outside wrapper is now a section. Then we have an UL and each slide is defined as an LI element. Let's move on by defining a couple of custom style sheets. To do that, open styles.css, remove any old code from create react app and add your custom styles. In this example, we will simply limit the size to 500 pixel width as we are quite constrained in terms of space here. Also, we remove the padding on the left for each li element. If you want, you can also use inline styles. If you use style sheets or inline styles, that's totally up to you. Next, we want to add an arrow to the left and one to the right to slide through the carousel, as well as add some bullets on the bottom to indicate which is the current active slide. To do that, we simply add navigation and pagination attributes to the swiper element. As you can see on the left, we now have those blue arrows. But for some reason, if you click them, it doesn't work. Also, the bullets on the bottom are not visible. The reason for this is that we first have to import these features. Also, we have to tell Swiper that we now want to use these features. To do that, we use swipercore.use. At first, this might look a little cumbersome, but it makes a lot of sense because initially we only load the elements that we really need. By using the import statement, we add more source code, which increases the amount of data that needs to be transferred during page load and therefore decreases performance a little bit. So import only what you really need. As you can now see on the left side, the blue arrows work if you click on them. Also at the bottom, we now have some blue bullets working. If you want, you can also define the space between slides and also how many slides you want to see per view. Swiper comes with a couple of events that you can use. I'm only going to go through the most important ones here, but if you want more, there's a very comprehensive documentation for Swiper React on the web. In this example, we will define three event listeners. One when the swipe is initialized, one when the slide changes, and one when the end of the carousel has been reached. All these event listeners always pass an instant of the swiper object. This gives you a good way to inspect the element and access other properties if needed. You can see in console in the left bottom side, all the console log output is printed when you move through each slide. If you need additional information, go to swipejs.com slash API and scroll down all the way to the events. There's one extremely important thing you have to remember though. You might have noticed that on the left side, the names of the events are a little different compared to those on the right side. The ones in React start always with the word ON and then a capital letter. On the left side, you see the name of the events of the original Swiper component, which is built not for React. So always keep in mind, use the name slide change in this example, put the both letters ON in front of it and use a capital S as you see in this example. Okay, so we do have a carousel, but there's more stuff we can add. For example, if you want to add a thumbnail gallery, we can do that. To do so, just create a new swiper and give it the ID thumbs. Next, we register the on swiper event listener and assign set thumbs swiper to it. Also, since this is just a regular swiper, 
we have to add a couple of slides. Now in this case we call them thumbs and we fill them the same way we've done before with a for loop. We're almost there, but React is complaining that set thumb swiper is not defined. This makes sense because we have not imported that. So let's do that. First, we have to import the useState hook from React. Also, we import the thumbs feature from swiper. Next, we have to tell swiper to use thumbs. To do that, we use again swipercore.use. Also, we have to define our new state. We do that by using the useStateEffect hook we just imported. Save the code and we should see on the left side the result. Now the thumbnail gallery has appeared at the bottom, but for some reason there's just one image and also when moving or clicking anything on that gallery we don't see a change in our main carousel. So let's fix that. This is easy to work around though. Just scroll down to the main carousel and tell Swiper they would like to use the thumbs feature. Next, we increase the space between each thumbnail and define three thumbnails for each view. Now this looks much better, doesn't it? We can move through the thumbnail carousel and if you click one of those thumbnails, the carousel on the top changes as well. One thing that definitely looks a bit odd is that the bullet points at the bottom of the upper carousel are slightly outside of its viewport. To fix that, we simply add a little bit of CSS styles. Okay, now that the thumbnail gallery works, there's the last feature that I would like to show you. Swiper comes with a built-in feature which is called a controller, which lets one carousel control a different one, which means whenever you slide through carousel one, the slides in carousel 2 change as well. To demonstrate this feature, I create another swiper instance. I assign the set control swiper element to the on swiper event listener and then create another set of slides. As these will be quite similar to the first ones, I simply copy and paste the for loop from our first slide carousel. To keep things easy, I simply rename the array to slides2 and I start the array at 5. To get this to work, we have to again import the controller library and tell Swiper Core that we would like to use this feature. Pretty much the same way we initiated a new state for the thumbnails, we have to do the same thing for our new controller slides. And voila, we have another carousel at the bottom of our page. Now, if we swipe through it, we don't see any change yet. So what we want is we want to connect this carousel on the top with the one on the bottom. So let's do that. This is just a quick fix though. To realize this, just scroll down a little bit to our first slider and assign the controller to its element. And there you have it, hit save and whenever you change the slide on the top carousel you can also see that this carousel on the bottom also changes automatically. One small thing I want to change here is that I want to display a completely different style of image on the bottom carousel. To do that I change our for loop to start at 9 and go up to 14. The reason why this works is the pixel.photos images 
start beautiful land landscape images at ID 9. If you want to learn more, go to swipejs.com slash react. The documentation is quite comprehensive and you should find everything you need in those files. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and happy coding!